I have great news, my new character design course has just dropped. If you're looking to step up your character design game, look no further. I am a great teacher. My new course with Domestica covers the fundamentals of character design, talking a little bit about my influences, my career, and in the assignments we'll be creating lineups of characters, some poses, a final illustration, all while using the design principles that I've been teaching about. So worry not, I'll be holding your little hand the entire way. I will not abandon you. And I am very excited. So if you'd like to check it out, click the link in the description below. Please use my link, that'll help me a lot. And go ahead, tell your friends about it. Tell your mom about it, tell your grandma about it. This is women supporting women. All right, all right, it's time to start the video. I have to make a new Zelda poster and I'm the only one forcing myself to do this right now. Who's making me? Me, I am making me. Every year I table at a fan convention selling my art and I wouldn't be caught dead not having new art to sell. But here's the thing, I'm a busy bee. I just released a new character design course. You should take it. Well, I wanna make a poster of the new Breath of the Wild game, you know, the, the, the Tears of the Kingdom, but I haven't played it. I've only played the first game. So how am I gonna make a poster for a game that I've never played in the most efficient way possible. What kind of artists pump out so much art and it always looks so good? Graphic novelists, comic book artists. Bond dessiné. And who's my favorite comic book artist? Well, of course, Loic Locatelli. His art is so simple, it's cute, but he has such a broad understanding of drawing everything and anything. Cause that's what you have to do. You gotta, you gotta wear a lot of hats when you're a comic book artist. And a book like this must have taken 25, 50 years to do, but no, it probably didn't because he's quick and he's efficient. And that's what I wanna learn from him. So let's put our brains together and see how I can absorb the efficientness and the quickness of Loic's art while staying true to myself and creating an illustration for a game that I've never played before. But how am I gonna organize all these disconjoined thoughts in one place where I can like visualize everything? Good thing today's sponsor is exactly that. I'm gonna be using Milanote, an easy to use tool to organize your ideas and projects into visual boards. What makes Loic's art his art? It's simple, it's rough. The colors are very monochromatic with lots of gradients, the palettes are very cohesive and very cute. And for the effects, because I will be having effects in my piece, it's also lined, it's scratchy, there is a little bit of a glow. So I'm gonna go into my subboard of comic examples. We're gonna look a little bit more in depth. There's a lot of cross hatching. I'm gonna see if I can include that. And the effects have this simple gradient going from light to dark. And as for my poster, I have a composition thumbnail. <laughs> and because I haven't played the game, let's go to our subboard again. I've had to do a little bit of research on what makes the second game different from the first game. There is new types of shrines. It looks different than the first game. And then there's these goofy like robots because you can like build stuff. I don't know, I haven't played it. So here's my idea for the color palette. I'm just a little bit worried because the magic is light blue that it might clash. I also wanna focus on a really big cloud in the background, but another option if the blue doesn't contrast enough against the magic is I want it to be a little bit of this sunset vibe. Because I'll be printing out this piece, I gotta make sure that nothing's too vibrant that doesn't print. I wanna make sure that this poster looks like the second game because I want them to think that I've played it. So Milano is free and you can sign up using the link in my description down below and start your creative project. So I start this project like I start most projects on my iPad because I don't want the pressure of recording myself on my computer. And this, this does the job. So I'm sketching out the basic composition that I had with Link and Zelda in the middle of the page and the magic's kind of swirling around them. I had to bug a friend who actually played the game to ask if this makes sense <laughs> throughout a lot of the process. And then I kind of start thumbnailing the color scheme idea before continuing on. And because I want it to be so efficient, um, it became the least efficient way possible. I think choosing a color scheme probably took the longest amount of time throughout the entire process. Like this, like I, like my goal was to make this really quick, you know, maybe a couple hours tops, just scratch and scratch. But this ended up taking, I think I have like five hours of recording footage. And honestly, most of it is just from choosing colors. So I start roughing out the characters a little bit better because if there's one thing about me is I'm a character designer. Sign up for my character design course. So I want these characters to look good. I want them to be very simplified and stylized and really shape heavy and fun and cute. So I'm kind of pushing that part of my style a little bit more. I'm throwing in some rough effects. I think that this lineless idea looks good. Eventually I change it to be lined because it fits, it suits more to the piece itself, especially because I'm trying to follow Loic's like simplified style a little bit more. And everything's lined, so it doesn't really make sense not to have it lined at the end. I rough out the rest of the pieces. I'm looking up 
exactly what his part of the second Breath of the Wild. All those new bits and bobs, all those new types of characters and little things like that. And then before I move on with the color palette, I do what I do best. I start lining the characters. I know how these characters will end up looking, so I'm just gonna do them first, get that out of the way, and worry about the part that I don't wanna do at the very end, which is what I do. <laughs> I keep their lines pretty rough. I'm not cleaning it like super tight, just a rough idea. And then I begin playing with the color palette and I accidentally deleted Photoshop in between the sketch phase and this phase. And then I re-download Photoshop and then, and then the tools are whack in this new version. So I spent like the longest time reinstalling every single version of Photoshop until I found the one with the original gradient tool. So that's on dedication. I'm working on maybe like four or five different types of color palettes. I really wanted that blue one to work with the, just the green grass, the blue sky, the white cloud, but the characters got so lost against it, especially with the blue magic, that I knew I couldn't do it. But every single other palette that I was choosing was a little bit too dramatic. I really wanted this piece to feel light and fun and just like cute. And all these other color palettes were a little bit too serious, taking itself a little bit too serious not the vibe that I'm looking for. So I end up going with a little bit of a sunset idea, but not too sunset, not too pushed. And then it's time to start lining the background. Usually I avoid doing backgrounds in pieces just because it takes so long. I hate when things take too long. I am pretty impatient, I'd like to say, <laughs> especially because I'm not a big fan of line art. Like I like doing a fun sketchy sketch and then just like painting on top and practicing rendering. So by just doing lines, and not really being too focused on how the final looks like. You know, it's kind of gonna blend in with the backgrounds. I'm not too worried about shape languages and stuff like that. I feel like that allowed me to let go, to make something quickly and then just pump out the first drawing that comes to mind when I think of this shape or this line or sh whatever. After I finish all the lines, it's time to fill out all the shapes so I can start coloring soon. So I'm just using my lasso tool and I'm filling in all the lines with a basic silhouette. And once I fill in all the clouds and the ground layer and the character layer, I go in and I start, you know, painting out that character first. So once I fill out the silhouettes for the background, the clouds, the midground, and characters, I go in and I start blocking out what those colors are going to look like. And I'm just adding a little bit of texture because I'm thinking I'll probably, you know, go in a little bit cleaner a little bit later. But as long as I have that base idea of what it's going to look like, then I'm fine with moving on. I start with the characters because, you know, their colors are pretty simple. It already exists. I'm just following the reference of what their outfit looks like. So, you know, it's pretty easy. And like I said, I do all the easy work first, so then I can torture myself with the hard stuff last. And then I feel efficient and like I'm progressing and I can actually see the difference. So I'm just base flat coloring all the characters. I add texture in at the very end, but nothing too crazy. At this point, I realized that the lineless look of the effects is not gonna cut it. So I've never really done effects before. So that's why these, these effects look janky AF, right? I was really referencing Loic's effects from his pieces. They seem so quickly and effortless that I'm like, if I pretend that I'm doing this quickly and effortless, then maybe it'll look the same. It doesn't. And I've also noticed that the colors are kind of airbrushed on with a little bit of fuzz around it. So I just use an airbrush to do that. And I know there's probably like a glow or something, but you know, I wanna get the, the quickest way out of it possible. So I just use an airbrush where it passes the line a little bit. Playing with the colors, the idea of what it could be or of what I can do to make it you know, look simplified, but also like clear enough that this is a magic effect. Adding some glow and rim light around them to make them seem like affected by the lighting around them. And then at this point, I'm just filling in those lines a little bit to make them, you know, fit in with their environment a little bit more. And at the very end, I end up coloring their, their lines a little bit as well. So this part is the part that I think that I nailed with the efficiency thing that I'm trying to do. And I'm using the lasso tool and I'm using a brush on the dissolve blending mode and I'm just like throwing in some dissolve airbrush around and I'm not like trying to make crazy colors I'm trying to fit the colors within the palette the colors that are already on the page except for that bright green I'm just like screen grabbing from the rest of the piece I want the piece to feel cohesive 
I want it to feel like these the background elements just kind of fit together. The main thing you want to look at is the characters in the middle and then after that I want you to notice all these things on the ground. But at first I kind of wanted to blend in, right? At this point, after I did these pieces in the sky, I started realizing how it can fit together after I color the lines. Like the, the little floating islands in the sky, I think the one on the top right, I think that's bomb. I get really excited and I start having the momentum to finish because I hate doing illustrations. I never do them, they take so long. So this is probably actually the quickest illustration I've made using this method. I think the graphic novel method is very efficient and I'm excited to kind of explore it a little bit more. Using a lot of gradients, using a lot of soft airbrushing. So like I'm really using like a low transparency to my advantage and a lot of it to try to blend colors together and make a really cohesive color palette. I'm also trying to make where the colors are affected by each other, like it's affected by the lighting, like the mountains on the edges, like there is that little orange glow from the clouds from the background. And then I'm throwing in all those final details of the background before moving on to coloring the lines. Because once you start coloring the lines, that's where everything actually starts to fit together and actually looks like it's it's not crazy anymore. Because now things are finely blended and they look like they belong. After I start coloring in the lines, I'm doing some like extra touch-ups here and there with just a layer on top, using a brush to clean up some edges, adding some more details. Not everything has to be lined, like little pieces of grass that I'm throwing in. I'm just throwing in the color because rules are meant to be broken. I also noticed that I didn't really do that cross hatching of shadow that I was studying in Loic style, but I don't care, so there's that. I'm trying to see how I can make these clouds look a little bit better, make them look a little bit more intentional, not like I threw in one or two textures and then I moved on. So I added a little bit of softer like lighting to it to make it really feel like it's in place. I'm adding some thicker white around the glow effect. I wanna keep it graphic, but I also want it to pop out a little bit more against this background. I'm also adding a little like white like lines around and throwing in all these little like magic effects to make it feel nice and special. At this point, I'm adding color to the character's lines to make them fit into their environment a little bit more. Adding some final touches like a gradient map over the whole thing, playing with the overlays, trying to see how I can fix it as much as I can without, you know, messing it up. I'm checking my values in black and white and I'm also flicking in CMYK so I can see what it'll look like in print. The bright blue isn't as bright, but I don't mind. I think it'll look nice in print, so I'm not making a huge deal out of it. And after I throw in some final touches like noise and an RGB split and maybe some shadows here and there, the piece is complete. I think it's cute, it's simple, it's what she deserves, and yet I worked too long on this. Not as efficient as I thought I would be, but it is my first time trying something new, so I should cut myself a little bit of slack. So that is the final Zelda piece inspired by Loic Locatelli style. Using a comic book inspired process really sped up the drawing time, I think. I would not have been able to make that whole background in the time that I did. If I used my current process, that would have been forever. So let me know if you like it. Go and follow Loic, he's amazing. And check out my character design course. Who doesn't want to improve their craft in our Lord's year of, of 2024? Like and subscribe if you don't hate me and I'll see you next time. Bye.